So this morning I woke up to this. Pal World made 100 million profit in four days by giving guns to Pokemon. Well, you were busy building your B2B AI SaaS with a hardware device no one ever wanted. Which made me wonder, what's Pal World? Well, it's a brand new game that's a huge, huge hit. 100 million revenue in 72 hours on Steam. 2 million concurrent users. Second ever to only PUBG. Which PUBG is the hardest addiction I've ever had to kick. But back to Pal World, there's a massive controversy around it because some people are accusing them of basically generating the entire game with AI. Why? Well, the CEO experiment with AI monsters back in 2021, or at least made references to it, based on some of his tweets, he seems to be really fascinated by AI. And their previous game was called AI Art Imposter and for sure used AI. Also, the development team is very small, and they have an insanely fast development speed. They just got interviewed on Japanese TV. Here's what we know. None of them knew how to develop a game. We all learned on the job, they said. Budget of $10,000. Most of the models and gun stuff was done by some middle schooler who was working part-time at a convenience store that the devs went to. Originally, they were going to use Unity to build the game, but realized it was too laggy, so they switched to Unreal. On the advice of the senior developer, who worked with Unreal once before. None of them knew how to use Unreal. The senior dev had to teach everyone how to use it. And they decided to make it about Pokemon with guns because, quote, Americans like to shoot things. Which, oh, okay, I guess that's fair. So this story has it all. Small game dev studio hits it big. The artist community is outraged. New technological shift that absolutely no one is ready for. And Pokemon. Well, it's not Pokemon actually. Any resemblance to Pokemon Alive or Dead is purely coincidental. But Nintendo, the owners of Pokemon, they are pissed. That's a whole other story. Now, AI and video games go together like a gamer and caffeine. On this channel, we've covered Voyager AI, where NVIDIA's researchers taught GPT-4 to play Minecraft, and it got really, really good with it. We've covered Smallville, where 25 GPT-4 NPCs run a town and try to achieve an objective without any human supervision, and they get really, really good with it. We cover where an AI plays Pokemon Red using reinforcement learning, and it gets really, really good with it. And of course, we've covered things like Chad Dev, where we string 16 Chad GPT together into a game development studio, each with its own departments like coding, testing, and documenting, with the CTO, the chief technical officer, running around and making sure everything goes smoothly. You just type in what you want to make and they'll get to work creating it, testing it, working out the bugs, and then creating a manual in case you can't figure out how to play the game. Then they save everything into a neat little folder on your computer and it's ready to run. But this, this is different. PalWorld is accused of using existing copyrighted works and using AI to generate very similar looking knockoffs. Most people are fighting over whether they did it or not. First of all, let me show you how the latest AI is used in games. And two, we'll take a look at what PalWorld is accused of doing and the evidence for and against them. Using AI to create your own story. So the first and most obvious use of AI in games I saw was simply hooking up something like ChatGPT to NPCs. The non-player characters who inhabit the world, the various companions that quest with you. In the past, they had a few lines of dialogue, no ability to respond to new situations, and limited scripted responses to scripted in-game events. With AI, you can literally make your own storyline, and the characters, like good improv actors, would just go along with it, no matter how insane you made the storyline. In Skyrim, for example, you were supposed to go yell at dragons, right? Something about yelling at dragons. I never followed the quest line, I don't actually know. I was more interested in figuring out... What is the color of night? In case you were wondering, it's... Sanguine, my brother. That was the password to get into the Dark Brotherhood in Skyrim, which was a guild of skilled assassins who carry out assassination contracts. Rumor has it they also have some links to a Diedric Prince too. They're the bad guys who are all about violence, if, if I haven't made that clear. To get in, they ask you, what is the color of the night? And you answer, Sanguine, my brother. Now, Sanguine means optimism and joy. It also means blood red. 
a lot of love and attention was put into the Dark Brotherhood storyline. And this simple password exchange, I think, really shows you how beautiful and dark that quest line was. But let's say you wanted more after that scripted storyline ended. Let's say you wanted to write your own continuation of the Dark Brotherhood storyline, but darker, much darker. Skip to the next video chapter if this isn't your thing. But if you wanted to go down that rabbit hole, here's how you would do it. First, you hook up one of your companions to ChatGPT. You can use OpenAI's Whisper, which is an open source speech to text and have it transcribe your voice into text and feed that into ChatGPT. You describe the character ChatGPT would play and you prompted it to respond to your requests. You used 11 labs to turn the text output into speech and the setup is complete. Now you can talk to your companion and they respond in kind. And now you can write your very own new AI assisted ending to the Dark Brotherhood saga. Now, if you recall at some point in the quest line, you get a contract to assassinate the owner of the Honor Hall or orphanage in Riften. Let's say you wanted to pick up where that story ended. Your new storyline involves you taking over the orphanage and turning it into a thriving business. Step one is to introduce your companion to this idea, but it must be done gently. We don't want to scare her off. Why aren't you eating your delicious mystery meat? Looks like mystery meat isn't my thing. You don't know what it is. You don't know if you don't like. I prefer to know what I'm putting in my mouth. Next, we introduce her to the other henchmen so they can start developing their professional relationship. Good work on the orphan farm, boy. Boy is in charge of the operation. Oh, great. The boy is in charge. I feel so reassured now. What could possibly go wrong with that brilliant decision making? Then we embark on a quest to push out the competition. Don't do that. <laughs> I, I slapped him with a fish. Slapping someone with a fish is certainly unique. And eventually we have a tragic falling out and have to tie up the loose ends. Do you know where we are? Of course I do. Do you have last words before you go sailing and splat below? I've always enjoyed a good free fall. But before I go, let me just say, I never liked heights anyway. In the end, we're on our knees lamenting the death of our business, obviously. By the way, if you want to see that full video, it's called The New Skyrim VR Experience with AI Changed My Life by I Am Krusty, and it's much darker than it seems. Using AI to generate code for software and games. Another way that AI is being used in games now is to actually code and test these games or software applications. Now, this is still very early stage. We are not quite at the point where you can have entire software development studios run completely by AI. But projects like Chad Dev and Microsoft's Autogen are showing that we are getting ever closer. In Chad Dev, for example, you are given a team of AI developers in different departments. You give them a task, like create a roguelike game with a health system and multiple levels to explore. And they go to work creating it. The design department thinks through and writes out all the things that you need to make that happen. It's the initial early planning stages. Coding then picks that up and writes the code needed to make all those ideas happen and then sends it over to testing. Testing tries to iron out all the bugs or kicks it back to coding if they need some specific modifications. And then if everything's working fine, the documenting department writes up a little manual for the game as a PDF, explaining what buttons to use and how the game works. The cool thing about this is that the people who made this, they took the time to develop a neat little video game-like user interface where you can see all these AI agents communicate, write code and complete the tasks you give them. But make no mistake, this puts out working usable code. At the end, you get a little folder on your computer with the code, with the manual and all the assets you need to make that run. Members of that community share various projects they task their little AI agents to build, including games like Snake, Flappy Bird, Tetris, as well as simple apps like Currency Converter, various timers and trackers, as well as more advanced stuff like graphic and video editors. When I was testing this out, one thing that really floored me is when, while trying to create a Flappy Bird knockoff, my team ran into a bug. The testing department kept flagging an issue that was happening and kept kicking it back to the coding department. Coding would make some changes and push it back into testing. This kept happening multiple times, so I almost gave up because I assumed it just went into a doom loop and would just sit there burning through my OpenAI API credits. 
But after three or four tries, they managed to solve it. It was hard to believe that this was happening live. That AI is currently able to code and debug its own code seems hard to believe. Now granted, most of the applications are fairly simple, but this technology is improving fast and new open source solutions are hitting the market at a rapid pace. Using AI to generate graphics, 3D models, audio, and video. The next part of how AI is used in game development is the ability to quickly generate visuals, 3D models, art, video, etc. And this is where we get back to PAL world and the use of AI in games. First of all, the game was released on Steam, one of the larger PC gaming platforms right now. Recently, Steam added a AI disclosure for how they will treat AI in games. Here's a quote from The Verge. Under new rules, developers will have to disclose their use of the technology. Valve says that the change means it should be able to release the vast majority of games that use AI. Basically, the main concept is, quote, art assets generated by artificial intelligence that appeared to be relying on copyright materials owned by third parties. That is what they're trying to avoid. And this, at the end of the day, is what this whole controversy is about. When people refer to PAL world and whether or not they use AI and whether or not that's okay, they are not talking about using AI to create character dialogue or to make the world more immersive by giving NPCs more agency to do things, to live their lives, if you will or using AI-assisted coding tools, which, by the way, everyone now uses. Really, the whole controversy about using AI is whether or not they used other artists' works, their efforts and creativity to basically knock off their designs for profit. That is a huge debate right now around this game and just in general. Many in the artist community see generative AI as basically stealing the works of artists. In fact, some have developed a poison pill, as it's referred to, to try to sabotage AI art models. According to Axios, artists looking to protect their works from AI models may soon be able to add invisible pixels to their art that could thwart image generating models seeking to copy and train on that art. The goal of this poison pill is to trick an AI model during its training phase into cataloging an image as something other than it is, causing the model to generate useless results. And this tool called Nightshade gives creators a way to penalize AI developers who try to use their work without permission, attribution, and compensation, without having to resort to a lawsuit. The PAL world developer has mentioned AI in multiple tweets, one specifically pointing out that AI-generated Pokemon look indistinguishable from the original, meaning that, for example, I myself don't really know all the Pokemon, I've obviously seen the main ones, but looking at these, I could not tell you which are real and which are not. That blowfish seems familiar, and that's about it. Now, the very previous game they made heavily used AI-generated art as part of the game. Basically, the point of the game is that in a room full of artists drawing real paintings, one is an imposter using AI to make the painting. Later, when the paintings are revealed, everyone tries to guess who the imposter is, and when they do, they attack him. Which now seems almost prophetic. Now, after reading up about what happened, it seems like the group consensus is that they did not use AI to generate anything. They did not disclose anything to Steam. They do credit the artist that designed their characters, whether or not people think that those designs may have been derivative. Now, I have no way of knowing what they did or did not do during development. But having been following some of the AI news for the last year plus, I gotta say that there's a growing tension between artists and AI. I drove through LA last summer and many of the people in the artist strike had posters and statements that mentioned AI. Actors said they wouldn't memorize lines written by a computer, etc. OpenAI is engaged in multiple copyright lawsuits right now. The good news is that a lot of this will force the lawmakers to give us some clarity on how AI intersects with copyright. Let's get down to brass tacks. If you made a video game that made 100 million this week and will likely go on to become a billion dollar game, keep in mind it's still in early access. It's not even out yet. And let's say you, the developer, had limited means, limited assets, and limited resources, so you used AI here and there to accelerate the development process. But 
Admitting that you used AI trained on copyright works puts in jeopardy the money you earned from copyright lawsuits, your ability to stay on the Steam store where all your sales are taking place, and as well as potentially losing the copyright on the characters that populate your game. When people start asking you all those questions, do you know what the answer is? Sanguine, my brother.